Hello everyone, in today's video I have a few questions for you. Have you ever wondered what makes watercolor paper watercolor paper? And why is it that with some paper they can handle water and watercolor paint better compared to other types of paper? And why is it that some colors appear to be more vibrant on certain types of paper? So today we are going to answer those questions. So paper is made by crushing the wood pulp, mixing them together and pressing it down into a thin sheet. With watercolor paper, there is the additional step of applying sizing to the paper, either internally during the paper making process or applying sizing after the paper making process. During the process, they have to add certain compounds, either organic or inorganic, to basically treat the paper so that the paper can handle water. So that when you're painting on the paper, the water doesn't soak through the paper. And when there is paint on the paper, it allows you more time to work with the paint. It allows you to paint gradations. It allows you to blend colors into one another all that without the paper disintegrating. So sizing refers to the treatment of the paper. It's not about the physical size or the dimension of the paper. When I started learning watercolor, I always get confused between sizing and size. So how's the sizing on the paper versus how's the size of the paper? Those are two different things. And sizing can be applied internally to sort of strengthen the paper to make it more water resistant or it can be applied externally. Some manufacturers would spray the sizing on the surface of the paper or they would actually dip the paper into a tub of sizing. And the most common type of sizing used is the gelatin, which is made from animal collagen. So it's a organic compound, it's translucent, it's odorless. When you're painting on paper with very heavy sizing, the paint and the water would actually float on the surface of the paper. It would run around. It's obviously not good. This is not very different from painting on plastic or on glass. And when you tilt the surface, the water and the paint would just run off. So what you want is for the paper to absorb some of the water and absorb some of the paint. Now, if the paper doesn't have any sizing, the water is going to soak through and sometimes it may actually damage the integrity, the structure of the paper. So sometimes you may see paper fiber coming off. So what you want to look for in good watercolor paper is the paper must be properly sized. And by the way, I have another video on how you can choose good watercolor paper. You may want to watch that. Today's video is sort of like a complimentary video to that video that I created much earlier. All right, let's get on to the main content of today's video. I want to show you the difference between paper that is sized versus paper that is not sized. So I want to do some wet on wet on the paper. So first of all, I'm going to wet the surface of the paper. So with paper that has no sizing, when you spray water or when you apply water on the surface of the paper, sometimes the water would actually soak through. This is very true for newsprint, for example. And this is Bristol board paper, 180 GSM. And I can see that the paper is quite thick, so the water hasn't soaked through yet, but you can see the paper starting to buckle. So if this paper has been sized properly, there shouldn't be any buckling or shouldn't be any significant buckling. So now I'm painting some, I'm just painting some random colors on the paper. I'm not sure if you can see it, but the paper surface, the fiber on the paper surface is starting to come out. So this paper is definitely not sized, it's not treated for use with water. Another thing to note with this paper is notice how the red, it doesn't blend into the yellow even though the paper surface is actually wet. That's because the paper has already put in the pigment and once the pigment is being put into the paper, it's not going to spread out because the pigment is no longer on the surface of the paper. Bristol paper is actually for pen and ink illustration. It's not for watercolor. This paper is quite thick though. The water hasn't soaked through yet. Let's take a look at this paper. This is the Strathmore writing paper. This is only 90 GSM. And once again, I want to spray some water on the surface. Notice I sprayed a lot of water and 
In this case, I can see the water soaking through already. So as I'm painting on this paper, I can sort of feel that the paper is becoming softer and softer. I feel that if I press hard, the paintbrush would actually go through the paper. This is 90 GSM, so it's not that thick, but you can see the water has soaked through. So this is obviously not good paper for watercolor use. This is basically writing paper for pencil or pen and ink as well. Another thing to note about paper that is not sized is it's going to affect the vibrancy of the color. So for example, here you can see the color is small muted compared to that on the Bristol paper. And that's not because this paper is more white and this is off white. The reason is because colors appear more vibrant on paper when the paint is on the surface of the paper. And this happens on paper that has proper sizing. So how this works is like this. The light would come in from the front of the paper. It will go through the transparent watercolor paint that is on the paper. And the light would hit the paper and gets reflected. And when it gets reflected, it would show off the colors, the vibrancy of the color. So when the paper is lit by light, it's going to be bright. The light is going to be reflected off the surface. It's going to shine through the watercolor paint and that allows you to see the colors. So if the light is very dim, then the paper is not going to be lit up properly. The paper is going to look dark and the colors will look very dark as well. This happens when you are looking at your painting in a room without light. Now, in this case here, this paper is, doesn't have any proper sizing. So this actually happens. The paint is absorbed beneath the paper surface. So when the light comes in, it's going to reflect off the paper surface and this time around the light doesn't shine through any paint because the paint is below the paper surface that's why we get something like this versus something like this so these two pieces of paper they have buckled quite significantly now let's test proper watercolor paper so this is the Daler Rowney Aquafine watercolor paper this is made with wood pulp there is no cotton content. Once again, I'm going to spray the surface of the paper to make it wet. Now this paper has sizing on the surface, so the water will not soak through. Now the colors here, they are way more vibrant compared to that on the Bristol board and also the writing, the Strathmore writing paper. This paper has buckled as well, even though it's quite thick, it's 300 GSM. So the colors, they do look more vibrant compared to the Bristol board, even though this paper is off-white and this is bright white. And this paper is quite thick, so the water and the paint, they don't soak through. Next, let's test the Kenson XL watercolor paper. Now the colors here are not as vibrant compared to the Dela Rowney paper. So the sizing here, um, it's, I'm not sure what to say about it. Now, first thing I notice is the paper quality for this is not that good. I can see the paper fiber starting to come off the paper surface. When you see paper fiber starting to come off the surface, that is an indication that this paper is not going to be good for glazing for layerings or for picking up paint. So this is the Kenson paper and this is the Dela Rowney. The colors are more vibrant compared to the Bristol and the Strathmore writing paper, but it's less vibrant compared to this. It's still pretty vibrant, but less vibrant compared to this. Next, we have this Fabriano Studio watercolor paper, which has 25% cotton. So the Kenson and the Dela Rowney, they have no cotton content at all. 300 GSM paper may be thick, but if you use a lot of water, it's still going to buckle. So what I look out for in watercolor is when you're painting on it, the colors would diffuse softly. That's good watercolor paper. And this paper, the sizing is not bad. The colors are quite vibrant. We have this Archer's 100% cotton paper. Now Archer's, they use gelatin for internal as well as for external sizing. 
the moment I paint on the paper, I can feel that the quality it's really there. And also when I paint, I can see the colors starting to diffuse pretty quickly. And notice when I paint the red into the yellow, the edges, they are very soft. So this paper has really good sizing. Now this sort of performance is actually due to a combination of factor, the sizing, the cotton content, and also your technique. The last paper that I want to show you is also 100% cotton paper and this is from the Strapmore 500 series mixed media journal. I'm going to use this pitch so as not to waste a blank pitch. Now this paper is not very thick so I used some markers here and some of the marker ink is coming through on this page but it doesn't really matter. So let me spray the paper again. And let's paint and see what happens. So I'm going to tilt the paper at an angle. All right, uh, first thing that happened is I sprayed a lot of water and it seems like the paper has soaked in most of the water. So this paper obviously has no sizing. And notice as I sprayed on the paper, I can start, I start to see the paint marker from the opposite page. So this is obviously paper that is not good for watercolor use. So what I'm going to do here is to dry off this page and let me move on to a blank new page here so that we can see its actual performance. So let's wet this. This paper is very absorbent because it has no sizing. So when it has no sizing, the paper is going to absorb all the water or the paint into the paper. And now let's paint and see what happens. I still need to spray some more because seriously this paper, because of the lack of sizing, it's really soaking in all the water. So that's why it's important to get paper with proper sizing. Even though this is 100% cotton, it performs very differently compared to the Arches watercolor paper, which is also 100% cotton. So now that the paper is thoroughly wet, I can paint on it and I can see that the paint, the colors, they do diffuse. As I lay down the red paint, notice how the colors, they don't spread out as much as softly compared to the arches. So the paper surface is still wet. The red paint is moving. Let me add yellow to it. And let me add red paint on red paint here. And see whether or not it can diffuse softly. Now, 100% cotton paper is very durable, so you can put multiple layers on top and the paper fiber will still be intact. So you don't have to worry about the paper uh, surface, the, the fiber coming off the paper surface. So you can keep scrubbing if you want to or you can lift the paint up. So I tried to lift up the paint here while the surface is still wet and I wasn't able to lift up the paint completely. That's because the paint has soaked into the paper. I can no longer get the paint out. Now compare that to this Dela Rowney Aquafine paper. So I'm going to lift the paint as well. Let's add some water here and try to lift this up again and see if we can lift this completely. One more time. And one last time. Let's try lifting paint from the Archer's paper as well. So this is 100% cotton paper. Let's add a bit more water and let's sort of scrub the paper. Now this is cotton paper, so it's going to be very durable. You can scrub 
with your wet towel or your brush and you can almost clean up you can almost clean up the paint and a bit more so this is how durable this paper is and also there is sizing on the paper I think that helps as well so let's compare the three papers that I have just lifted paint off from so with the archer's paper I can pretty much lift off most of the paint this is pretty good performance with the Strathmore 100% cotton paper I wasn't able to lift up the paint completely so you can see how clean this is this is also 100% cotton paper this is 100% cotton paper but because there is no sizing on the paper the paint is absorbed into the paper and once it's inside the paper it's very difficult to get the paint out with the Dela Rowling Aquafine I can scrub off most of the paint as well I can lift off most of the paint as well because there is sizing so when it comes to lifting paint off the paper what the paper is made of whether it's cotton or wood pulp it doesn't really matter as much compared to whether there is proper sizing on the paper so these are all the paper that I have tested today paper that is made with 100% cotton content paper that is made without any cotton paper that has proper sizing applied to the paper paper without proper sizing so how the paper the water and the paint reacts really depends a lot more on the sizing than what the paper is made of one of the main benefits of using paper with proper sizing is it will make the colors more vibrant and it will allow you to use wet on wet techniques easily finding good watercolor paper with proper sizing unfortunately is sort of like a trial and error process you have to test the paper before you can find out how good the sizing is unless you go for trusted brands like Fabriano or Archer's 100% cotton paper all right if you have any questions let me know in the comment section and I would love to find out from you what paper you are using for painting with watercolor that's all for today's video thanks for watching see you in the next one Bye.